Welcome back to the 616 and alcohol abuse is a prevalent reality in America and the problem is not improving. According to a study by the National Institute of Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism published recently in the Journal of American Medical Association, nearly one third of Americans uh, alcohol consumption puts them at risk for alcohol dependence. And Jessica Kaysen with Aspire Counseling Services joins us this morning to talk more about the help that is out there and kind of the signs that you can look out for if you or a loved one um, is dependent on alcohol. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, we, we've seen this kind of this conversation um, become more uh, prevalent in our uh, in just across the nation and world over the last couple of days following Steve Harwell's death. He, um, of course, was the lead singer of Smash Mouth. He passed away a couple days ago from liver failure, and he had a history of alcoholism. Um, and so a lot of people are starting to talk about how this is a really big problem across the country. We're talking about possibly a third of America that is dependent on alcohol. Um, what, what are some of the signs we need to be looking out for to make sure that someone that we love or, or ourself um, is, may have a problem? So for someone who's dealing with alcohol abuse or a loved one, if you're living with somebody or have somebody you care about that's struggling with alcohol use, things you can look for is a lot of isolation, maybe increased uh, depression. Alcohol um, is a depressant, so it definitely will increase your depression levels. Um, a lot of the time people use it as a coping mechanism to deal with things like mental health, stress, occupational, uh, financial issues, things like that, but it definitely increases the depression and the mental health um, aspects of that are exasperated. Um, the uh, me physical uh, health also, it affects your liver, it affects um, your kidneys, your blood pressure. Um, it also uh, can cause cancer of the mouth, the throat, um, the colon, the esophagus. Uh, relationships also um, are neglected, not as um, active with maybe their children or parents or friends. Definitely a lot of isolation, um, things like that. What is what is a, like a major sign of kind of like a big red flag um, of you know what I have a problem or seeing someone a big red flag that they that you may notice in in someone. So it's important to remember that alcoholism looks different on everybody. Right. It's not like you can diagnose it like oh these are it's like a checklist right. Well there is there is um, the DSM five which right. is the Diagnostic Manual for Mental Health um, and there are eleven criteria um, specifiers of someone being able to identify alcohol use disorder. If someone is concerned about their alcohol use, they can always do a self administered test called the audit, which is the alcohol use disorder. Um, identification test. It's 10 questions and it asks specifics about how um, how much you drink and then how the alcohol has affected your life. Um, and based on that, it gives you a score between 1 and 40. And then it also gives you um, specific uh, recommendations of what to do based on that score. Um, if you also can re reach out to a professional. Um, they can also administer the test or get an evaluation to see if you do meet any of the 11 criteria for alcohol use disorder. But you said it looks different in everyone, right? Mm -hmm. So somebody might think, oh, I don't have that big of an alcohol problem because I still have a job. I'm, I don't have a serious alcohol problem because my wife is still with me or I still have my kids or my parents still allow me to live in the house. They think of alcoholism as being somebody who's on the street, homeless, who doesn't really have anything, who's lost everything. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have an alcohol problem because your whole life hasn't completely fallen apart. But maybe there have been um, arguments with their significant other due to the alcohol use, but they have not seen how much it's really affected their loved ones. Maybe they call into work all the time or show up late or um, are hungover and have a difficult time going, but their boss doesn't know that it's from alcohol. Right. So it's easy to try to um, pretend that it's not as big of an issue as it really is, which is where the 11 criteria really comes into play. Right, I know a lot of people think, oh, it's just having a fun time, you know, and it can, it can mask those so many other things. Yes. Uh, Jessica Kikason with Aspire Counseling Service, thanks so much for coming in, appreciate Thank it. You.